You are about to engage in the ELA Guidebooks Unit, The Birch Bark House. The purpose of this video is to help you better understand the life and the culture of the Ojibwe, a Native American tribe living in North America, long before Europeans began to settle here. This information will help you to better understand the text in this unit and their, connect their connections to the Native American people and their culture. Be sure you have your handout available and something to write with for this video. Imagine trying to survive without technology, machines, and even grocery stores. Could you provide food, clothing, shelter, and other needs without them? The Ojibwe people did not have these luxuries, so they had to find other ways to survive. Let's take a closer look at how the Ojibwe people use the land to do just that. The Ojibwe were once one of the largest and most important tribes in North America. They made their home in what is now the United States, from Michigan to North Dakota and parts of Canada. They were a woodland tribe and occupied areas of dense forests and lakes. The Ojibwe are known for being one of the most peaceful and generous tribes in North America. They worked closely as a community to use the natural resources of the land to meet their needs. The Ojibwe were deeply connected to the land and seasons. They were semi-nomadic, which means they moved around from season to season for different purposes. You will learn more about how the Ojibwe lived and worked together each season as you read the book, The Birch Bark House, and the upcoming units. The seasons were extremely important to the Ojibwe. Nabin, or summer, was the shortest and warmest season. During the summer months, the tribes lived by the banks of the Great Lakes where fishing and was plentiful and there was rich soil for planting crops. Families worked together to plant and harvest corn, squash, pumpkins, and other crops to share amongst the tribe. The women of the village spent their time gathering berries, seeds, and other plants in the lush forests. Several families lived together in large rectangular homes called wigwams. The male tribe members spent most days fishing and hunting deer, moose, and other game in the region. Birch trees serve the Ojibwe people in important ways. Tribe members collected birch bark and used it to cover their homes, build canoes, form baskets, and even to use as paper. Now you are ready to think about how the Ojibwe people met their needs during the summer. Pause this video to record your answers on your handout at the first stop sign, then hit play when you are ready to continue. The Ojibwe use the land in many different ways during the summer. Some ideas include fishing, hunting, gathering berries, collecting birch bark, and growing crops. Nagawagon, or fall, was a time to store up food for the difficult winter ahead. The Ojibwe moved their villages along the banks of the lakes and rivers where wild rice grew. The wild rice, which was unique to this region, was an important food source for the tribe throughout the year. The men of the tribe harvested the rice while the women dried and prepared the rice for cooking and storing. Children gathered wood to store for winter and learned to prepare traps and fishing nets. The Ojibwe dried and stored meat, fish, nuts, and berries in preparation for the winter. Now you are ready to think about how the Ojibwe people met their needs during the fall season. Pause this video to record your answers on your handout at the second stop sign, then hit play when you are ready to continue. Some of the ways the Ojibwe tr tribe survived off of the land during the fall included growing wheat to store, making traps and nets for fishing, and hunting and preserving many foods to prepare for the winter. Bibun, or winter, was a long and frigid season for the Ojibwe. Food was scarce and the winter was harsh. So, families separated into smaller family units. They moved deeper into the woods, into smaller wigwams, and away from other tribe members. Men, who spent most of their time from the village, away from the village, lived in a smaller, more portable teepee made from sticks and bark. They hunted, trapped, and went ice fishing to find any sources of food they could. 
They used the meat for food and clothing and stored anything that was left. Women scraped and tanned the animal hides, dried the meat and fish, repaired hunting and fishing nets and tools, sewed clothing and moccasins, and made snowshoes, all using hides, birch bark, and other natural resources. Although food was limited in the winter, they ate rice and other foods that had been preserved earlier in the season. <clears throat> now you're ready to think about how the Ojibwe people met their needs during the winter. Pause this video to record your answers on your handout at the third stop sign, then hit play and you are ready to continue. You may have included using animal hides, birch bark, and other natural resources to cover homes, repair tools, snowshoes, and moccasins, or sew clothes as the way the Ojibwe used resources from the land during the winter months. Other ideas could include hunting, trapping, and fishing. Miigwon, or spring, was known as the new year for the Ojibwe. Families and friends were reunited after the long winter as they moved once again to their sugar brush or maple forests. They harvested maple sap to turn into maple syrup and sugar. They gathered birch bark to create baskets for collecting, collecting sap, fruits, and seeds, build canoes, and cover their homes. They used birch bark torches to fish in the evenings, hunt for large game, and trap small animals. Now you are ready to think about how the Ojibwe people met their needs during the springtime. Pause this video to record your answers on your handout at stop sign number four. Then hit play when you are ready to continue. Some possible responses are, the Ojibwe used the land to harvest maple syrup, create materials using birch bark, hunted, trapped, and fished during the springtime. The Ojibwe lived life by seasons and used what the land provided to survive. Whether it was planting the fertile land in summer, harvesting wild rice in the fall, hunting and fishing in the winter, or trapping maple trees, tapping maple trees for sap in the spring. A quote from the Ojibwe is, we take only what we need and return what we can. This quote demonstrates the great respect and appreciation the Ojibwe have for nature by explaining what they used the land only for what they needed to survive and do their best to preserve it when they could. Now you are ready to think about how working together helped the Ojibwe people survive from season to season. Use what you have learned to respond on your handout. Pause this video to record your answers on your handout at the fifth stop sign. Then hit play when you are ready to continue. There are several ways the Ojibwe worked together to survive off of the land. You may have included that they moved from season to season to use the land in different ways or that each tribe member had a different role such as hunting, planting, drying and preserving food, making baskets, canoes and snowshoes, sewing cloth or building homes. You have learned about the Ojibwe people and how they use the resources of the land to meet their needs. As you engage in the ELA Guidebooks Unit, the Birch Bark House, you will use this information as you take a closer look at the life the Ojibwe lived throughout each season. When you finish this video, be sure to turn in your completed handout to your teacher.